Hi everyone, welcome back. Up to my fifth video on area under the curve. I'm trying to think of things that would happen in Western Australia or an Australian exam paper at the end of year 12 or at the end of your high school, or be it India or America or wherever you are. So I'm trying to think of the situations they could pull out that you don't commonly see, and this is one of them. Let's have a look what the wording is. Calculate the area enclosed by y equals five. Now hopefully most people are okay y equals 5 goes to 5 on the y-axis so it's a horizontal line y equals 5 then you've got this parabola of y equals x squared plus 1 and if you put a couple of values in like 0 0 squared plus 1 that would be your y-intercept so 0 plus 1 is 1 so there's that point there which is 0, 1 I should write on there that's 0, 1 then you can put in 1 so that would be 1 squared plus 1 is 2 so you put in 1 and you end up with 2, so that's that point there at 1, 2. And then you can put in 2 for, X, for the x value, so 2 squared plus 1 is 5. Now most people are okay with that, but I've got to put in a little bit of it just in case. So that point there is 2, 5. Now, what is enclosed? If I put that point there, is that in between, enclosed, which I'll talk about in between, is that in between that line, that line, and the y axis? That's just the answer is no. So just a little bit of moment because some people do struggle with it. So we're talking about this red area here. But the only thing we know how to do at the moment, unless I made this into a really revolting calculation, is we only know how to get the area coming down this way. Let's see what colour pen I've got. Let's see if I've got green that works. So if we come down this way here, we only know how to calculate that green area. We don't know how to calculate the red area as yet. We only know how to calculate the green area. So I could go ahead and start doing the question. But I'm going to look at this as an area question. So the area is, and I'm going to talk about the large area minus the small area. So the area, or I could say the red area. The red area is the large area, which is all of this rectangle there, and I could have just said the area of a rectangle. What's the trap? It's just 5 times 2. So that big rectangle there is just 10. And then the small area. We want to subtract the green area. So I could have talked about the small area being the green area. Let's talk about how do we calculate that green area. Under a curve means between the graph and the x-axis when you go vertically. So we know that that intersects there. We're at 2, 5. So that tells us we're starting at x equals 0. And we're going through to x equals 2. So the integral is, starts at 0, goes to 2. And you say, well, what's the equation of that graph? And this makes it a fairly easy one. I was sitting there daydreaming going, what questions can I put in to make this a good and useful question? And then I started thinking of square roots and all sorts of horrible circumstances. But the calculation becomes too bad. The nice part of this is being 0 helps out a little bit. So that's the big area, which is the whole thing, the rectangle minus the small area, which is the green area, and that gives us the red answer, the red area. Let's have a look at it. So, square brackets, then what's the rule for ii's? Integrating we increase the power and divide by the power. Integrating, first time you've ever seen me maybe, we increase the power by one, so it's x cubed, and you divide by the power. That's the only rule we have for anti-differentiation, which is what we use for integration. Now the 1x, I still will write that's x to the 0. So what do you do? x to the 0 is 1, so that's 1 log 1. So that's how you can write 1. The interesting part is you can just write 1 as 1x to the 0, which is 1 times x to the 0, which is just 1 times 1. Now, I don't know how many people really know that, so maybe you need to stop for a second and get that in your brain. So this is x to the 1 over 1. I don't bother writing the 1 on the numerator, and I don't write the 1 on the denominator. Now, we could go plus a constant, but when we're substituting values, you don't have to uh, write the constants because they eliminate each other. So I'm going to put that from 0 to 2. Let's have a look at what the answer is then. The answer is, now I'm going to go to the square bracket, you'll start to see why now, because you've got the square brackets and then you've got these things are actually called parentheses. This is the real word for brackets. That's a bracket that actually is a parentheses, but we all call them brackets nowadays. So we're going to substitute 2, the top value first, the furthest value across, we substitute first. So that's 2 cubed, which is 8 on 3, plus a 2. And then we're going to go subtract the smaller value, 
and you watch the brackets, mess the brackets affect everything. I call it the B word. The B word. Oh, please, people, when you're doing the exam, make sure you put the brackets in everywhere you show it, the B word. So, put the zero in now. So that's going to be zero, that's going to be zero, and that made that question really nice. It's going to drop out really easily. Now, what's the calculation? I've got 10 minus. Now, I'm going to take my time here. I'm going to go, that's, oh, can you just see it in your head? 3 into 8 is twice, with 2 left over. That's 2 and 2 thirds, plus 2. So we've actually got, it's a question, we've got 10 minus the 2 and the 2 is 4 and 2 thirds. And hopefully most of you can see in your head that that turns out to be just 5 and 1 third. And then we have unit squared. So don't forget the unit squared. I presume in most places, most states, sorry about that, is that you have to write unit squared because we don't have centimetres or metres involved. Though we could turn the question into metres and do all sorts of calculations. So that's an area under the curve with a twist that instead of going downwards, we're going crossways. Now, thanks for watching. I hope you find it helpful. I really do appreciate how much people are commenting and saying thank you and a lot of encouragement people saying that uh, they understand me. Okay, so just make it clear, because I'm in Australia, our courses, our high level courses, are further down the page on my YouTube page. So I'll start with your 7, 8, 9, 10 and then down through the senior courses. The further you go down, the higher it is in high school, which is the last years of high school and the last year in particular, and the higher the courses. So in Australia, in Western Australia, we have methods and specialists. Over east in New South Wales, oh, most of Australia has that. New South Wales calls it advanced. So if you're ever looking up things from New South Wales, it's advanced and they have extension one and two. Now, the content is the same. If you're at the very top of your mountain and wanting to get university into law, medicine, and engineering, all those sorts of cases, most people will take specialist math. In the specialist max, you have all the other topics like complex numbers. So I've got a heap of videos on complex numbers. I've got a heap of videos on 3D vectors and also on 2D vectors. And a lot of the high level graphing all goes into there. Methods are where you learn the basic calculus. And you learn all about exponentials and you learn about logarithm. So that is, this is a co-requisite for that. So you can't do specialist here without doing that. Be interesting to find out what's in other countries. I know some countries, when you get to the highest level maths, you do a double math. And that was all, that's what that's all about. Well, I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Chef, if you're in the last two years of your high school and you're in high level courses, it doesn't matter whether you're in South Africa, Canada, um, India, Indonesia, from what I've seen, Japan, no matter where you are, it's basically the same content. So have a look at this course here. If you're looking for calculus, and I've split it up into various special things of calculus, differentiation, a lot of people have trouble with factorization, a lot of people have trouble with graphing, the one's gone black here, graphing hyperbolas, cubic, square roots, parabolas, it goes on and on what you can graph there. Index laws, and they get tricky, muck people up a lot. They have a lot of trouble with those ideas. Integration, logarithms, now, if you click here again, you can get a lot more topics, a lot more playlists. I'll do it briefly. And you can come down to the bottom here, and we've got trig equations, thirds, non-right trig, uh, simultaneous equations, sequences and series. And on it goes. And in the very highest level one here, this is where people don't realise how much I've got. I'm going to click on there. By the way, I have these little uh, video lists of good videos to watch before our Year 12 exams here in Australia. They're Topics I know a lot of students struggle with, or I saw students have struggled with in their practice exams. So here we go, we've got calculus, we've got complex numbers, matrices, permutations, combinations, polynomials, all sorts of proofs, induction. Big one is this graphing, I'm going to make this one here black. Reciprocals of functions, inverses of functions, uh, F of G, uh, composite function, that goes on and on in that topic. Big topics, you can just look at your textbook and go, have I got simple harmonic motion? There's simple harmonic motion. Have I got simultaneous equations with three equations? You can see it just by looking at the chapter headings on your textbook. Trig equations, big one, vectors. In year 11 over here we do 2D vectors and then in year 12 we go to 3D vectors. So there are a lot of videos. There's 19 videos on 3D and 13 videos on 2D. I could make an awful lot more. 
Another big topic I've only just coming to grips with myself in recent years is the logistic model. And I've made one called the logistic model for dummies. And I've not gone through a lot of the complicated stuff. I just want to make it simple and understandable understandable for most people to do. Well, as usual, I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.